and called the censorship of the American public. I believe that description is accurate. Hi everyone, my name is Ioli Harper and I am um, going to talk to you a little bit today about mail-in voting. First of all, I follow Donald Trump on Facebook, so I am privileged to get his statements about certain topics straight from his mouth, so to speak. About mail-in voting, he stated absentee ballots are fine. A person has to go through a process to get and use them. Mail-in voting, on the other hand, hand, will lead to the most corrupt election in USA history. On June 10th, 2020, John Binder of Breitbart News said that 12.5%, which is one in eight ballots, which accumulates to 100,000 votes of all mail-in ballots at Rhode Island's primary elections were sent back as undeliverable. All a person would have to do to make sure that you don't get your mail is to look online and look up an old address of, of yours and send your ballot to that old address. They might even say that you are not a resident of your current address just to keep you from voting in that area. In my area, in our last Republican meeting, which was um, maybe about three weeks ago or a month ago or something like that, getting close to a month now, um, many people, including me, hadn't received a mail-in ballot yet for the primaries. Some people said they had received theirs. Someone about three weeks ago on Facebook asked me if I was living in Pipestone or Albert Lee. It was a duplicate account made of a friend of mine. I didn't know that at first, but was wondering why I was asked that since the person already knew that I lived in Albert Lee. That is the first thing that tipped me off to the fact that someone was trying to scam me and was gathering information about my current address. So I had to find out which account of my friends was the right one and block the other one since it appeared to be a fake account. Why did they want to know which was my current living address? I don't know. Uh, I doubt that I'll ever find that out. However, this goes to show you that it's not difficult for people to find out where you live and what your address is. You know, in my case, um, you know, maybe it was someone just trying to make a bogus account in my name or my husband's name or something like that because he just died about almost two months ago. But, um, you know, I didn't pick up on the fact that it wasn't someone that I already knew that was asking me this question until after I had already answered saying that I live in Albert Lee. And then after that, I was wondering like, why is she answering, asking me that question? Um, she knows. Anyway, um, Kevin Noons said, there is not a more important issue than this issue. The American people are being censored. Conservatives are being censored. David Gerald Nunes, in case you don't know, is an American politician and a former dairy farmer serving as the U.S. representative for California's 22nd Congressional District since 2003. He is a member of the Republican Party and Nunes was the chair of the House Intelligence Committee from 2015 to 2019. And like I said, he said the American people are being censored and conservatives are being censored. It would be nice if all people were honest. However, there are many people that are dishonest. J. Christian Adams, an American attorney and conservative activist who was formerly employed by the United States Department of Justice, stated of our current voting situation, putting the election in the hands of the United States Postal Service would be a catastrophe. In 2018 and 2019, there were 16 million missing and misdirected ballots. These represent 16 million opportunities for someone to cheat. Attorney General William Barr said that mass-scale mass mail-in voting absolutely opens the floodgates to fraud. There's questions about whether or not it even denies the secret ballot because a lot of the states you have signing the outside because a lot of the states have you signing the outside of the envelope. So the person who opens the envelope will know how people voted. Right now, a foreign country could print up tens of thousands of counterfeit ballots and it would be very hard for us to detect which was right and which was the wrong ballot. 
uh, all a person needs to do to see if you are a Republican or not is to do a name check on the internet. I know this because a couple of years ago I checked my name on the internet just to see what would come up. I wasn't looking specifically to see, you know, my um, my party status. I was just checking to see, if, you know, what was about me on the internet. Anyway, I looked at a couple of sites and one in particular that gathers general information on people had me listed as a Republican and I was surprised to see that. I thought, well, how would they know? At that time, you know, I didn't publicly go around saying that I'm a Republican. The only way anyone would have known was by seeing how I vote. The only way that anyone would know is by, by knowing how I vote. And they would have had to have access to uh, my voting records because at that time, I didn't, like I said, go, go around saying that I'm a Republican. And um, so it had me listed as a Republican and I am a Republican. Though I hadn't formally stated so at the time, the information was correct and could have only been ascertained by looking at my voting records. So there are ways that people find out what your political affiliation is, even if you have not publicly declared it. All a dishonest person would have to do is to find out what your name is by opening your mail, unless it was already on the outside of the envelope. And then if you are not of their political party, they could just throw your uh, ballot in the trash. So if you want your vote to be counted, you want to make sure that you can go and vote in person. The USPS is a mailing system. It is not a voting system. Putting that kind of responsibility and strain on an entity that is not meant for it is not fair and is not a good idea either. In Wisconsin, in an article from the New York Times dated April 9th, 2020, three tubs, it said, I read, Three tubs of absentee ballots that never reached voters were discovered in a postal center outside Milwaukee. At least 9,000 absentee ballots requested by voters were never sent, and others recorded as sent were never received. Even when voters did return their completed ballots in the mail, thousands were postmarked too late to count or not at all. There is no sense in blaming the Postal Service the Postal Service, like I said, is not set up to be able to handle the amount of votes coming in this year or any year, and they shouldn't be expected to. A New Jersey article on Breitbart News dated June 22, 2020, quoted Karen Gardner, Municipal Republican Chairwoman, as she described the ballot she received in the mail this year. She said the slate of candidates on the ballot was all Democrat, from Joe Biden down to the dog catcher, but on the upper right, it clearly stated... It was a Republican ballot, and it had my name and correct information on the return envelope. I found out that our la at our last party meeting that some of the towns round about Albert Lee have leaders that mandated that they have mail-in elections, though none of us knew about it until after the decision was made. In my opinion, they could have been taken to court for this. I think any people who are living in an area where this type of thing has happened would, would be well put to get a group of people together who live in that area and find a good lawyer, especially one who is from that area or close by, and start up a case against any town or city leaders who attempt to drastically change the voting system on an election year just a few months before the election, and especially without anyone else knowing. I would not trust anyone with my own voting ballot. Absentee ballots are for the military who can't vote in their area because they are serving overseas. People can safely vote in person. If you can go to Walmart to shop, you can go vote. People have been allowed to get together and protest in large numbers without COVID-19 restrictions placed on them all over the country, including here in Albert Lee. Yet the same people who allowed all of this to happen are telling us that they want us to do mail-in voting because of COVID-19. Just the fact that Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, and George Soros want people to do mail-in voting should scare you. An illegal immigrant or a dead person even might be more likely to send in a voting ballot and have it counted than you are to have yours even mailed in or counted accurately. Jennifer Carnahan, who is the Minnesota Republican Party Chair, and our other leaders are battling Minnesota Secretary of State Steve Simon, who through the courts, as she said, has been pushing for extreme changes to our way of voting in order to manufacture and manage election outcomes. 
Simon says on his website that, and this is quoted off of his website, I visited all 87 counties of our state, exchanging ideas about how to make our election system even better. Anyway, he says that he has been exchanging ideas about how to make our election system even better, listening to the concerns of small businesses and trying to improve the lives of all Minnesota families. The best way to improve our democracy is to find common ground and work together, he says. That's why I've successfully worked with Republicans and Democrats to get good things done. If that is what he is saying, then he didn't work with leaders of the Republican Party because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten a letter from Jennifer Carnahan a week and a half ago talking about this, talking about, and this I quote from the email she sent, the narrative from Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi to Governor Tim Walls and Secretary of State Steve Simon is all the same. And again, this is what she said. They are pushing for extreme changes to our way of voting in order to manufacture and manage election outcomes. In fact, Secretary Simon completely disre disregarded our legislative process and went around the state legislature to get what he wants in court. I also read um, on another article that one of the main arguments against Secretary Simon is that he disabled the requirement that a person voting in Minnesota through mail must have a witness sign as well who is also a Minnesota registered voter who will verify that the person whose signature was on the ballot was actually the person who signed it and filled it out. Some Republican lawmakers are accusing Simon of trying to subvert the legislature saying that without the witness requirement there is a greater chance of voter fraud. That makes sense, right? Um, now let's go on to talk about ballot harvesting. In an article dated March 23rd, 2020, I read, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's new stimulus bill would mandate, mandate nationwide ballot harvesting. So what is ballot harvesting? Um, I think that this is what they were initially trying to go for and are still after. It is where um, allowing where it allows party operatives to return other people's ballots to, po to polling places without any limit on the number of ballots. And here's some interesting information that I found out about it. Ballot harvesting was legalized in California in 2016 and first used in the 2018 midterm elections. There is no process. It allows... It allows anyone to drop off someone else's mail-in ballot at the polling station. There is no process for vetting or verifying those delivering the ballots. No background checks or identification requirements. Democrats dropped hundreds of thousands of ballots off at polling stations in 2018, helping Democrats as they flipped seven Republican seats. The practice is illegal in most other states largely because it is susceptible to fraud and intimidation. So the state you are living in might have a large Republican body of citizens. Yet with practices like ballot harvesting, an entire area of a state could be misrepresented in the political sphere. Ballot harvesting could very easily be done with mail-in votes. You think that people will be honest, but the fact that seven Republican seats were flipped due to ballot harvesting, shows the lengths that some people will go to to make sure that they stay in power politically. Due to experience, Pelosi knows that it is possible to flip an area due to seemingly unnoticeable, at the time, changes in voting law. They appear to be wanting to duplicate this around the entire country. If you are a Republican trying to convince other Republicans that it is fine to do mail-in voting, you might as well be voting as a Democrat this year because not only is your vote not likely to be counted, neither is the vote of your friend who you tried to convince. Now, I know a lot of people um, are worried about getting coronavirus and I don't know how many people are actually concerned about it. I have heard a couple of people express concern, people that were older, that um, usually help with the elections every year or whenever they have the elections. And, you know, some people are worried about getting it and getting sick from it. So um, if you are worried that you have a compromised immune system and are more susceptible to 
um, catching COVID-19 and getting really sick from it and are someone who helps with the voting each year or whenever the votings happen for your area, please consider finding someone who has a more robust immune system and train them how to do your job. In this way, you are still doing your job by making sure that people get their votes accurately counted. Whoever replaces you for the year can temporarily do your job for you until COVID-19 is past us. Out of all the solutions presented about, about voting reform, the most needed one, I believe, is this. People show up in person to vote, and they have a form of government ID, which allows only legal citizens to vote. There should be representatives from both major political parties at each of the voting sites to make sure that no one is committing any type of fraud. There also needs to be some type of recording on the premises of each voting area to make sure that votes are being counted accurately by those who are helping with the voting process, including on those days when people go vote early. Votes should be input into the computer in the presence of the person who voted so that they can make sure that their vote was input correctly. Now, living here in the time and age that we do with such a high level of technology, especially like we have here in the United States, this shouldn't be very difficult at all. We have higher levels of technology for things that are less important than this. The reason that I added that last part is because last voting season, I voted early. For some reason, the computer wouldn't accept my paper. It kept spitting it back out. I tried it like four times maybe to push the, uh, my ballot into the computer and it wouldn't read it. After that, one of the men who was there came up to me and kindly told me that he would input my information into the computer after I had left. That worried me. What worried me is what prompted the computer to spit out my ballot repeatedly. Uh, was it because I'm a Republican? Was it set that way? And why was I told that my votes would be manually put in after I had left? That seemed really weird to me. I had no choice but to leave, hoping that the people who were filling in my votes manually were honest. It did turn out that my area predominantly voted the way I did, and so it didn't bother me so much after that, but it was worrisome at the time. In closing, I'd like to say that there are so many ways that voter fraud is happening and has happened. I can't include all the stories and examples here, though I have seen a lot of articles about it. Also, there is the issue with trust. Don't misplace your trust in people. Just because they smile at you sweetly and they're so kind and so polite doesn't mean that they have your best interests at heart. And one of the reasons I say this is because I can't imagine that people who would rip a baby apart in an abortion and act like it's the right thing to do would have the conscience or mental or spiritual capacity to understand that they should be honest. If they can't even figure out that killing a baby is murder, they aren't going to figure out that miscounting a vote is dishonest. So imagining that you can trust anyone when there are so many people out there that are diehard supporters of abortion or people that are voting for it, even though they say that they don't support abortion. Imagining that you can trust these kind of people with your votes is putting your faith in someone who does not have the capacity to reason logically. So make sure that you do what you can in your area to make it so that you can vote in person so your vote will get counted. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for watching my video. I hope you found something helpful in all of this. Have a good day.